Hey everybody, thank you very much for joining me. My name is Scott and you have tuned into the Rookie Pacific Northwest Wine Enthusiast channel, YouTube's primary channel for discussing Northwest wines. Tonight we're going to go ahead and we're going to dive right into this review. We are looking at Market Vineyard's 2018 red blend called Derivative tonight. So if you have this particular bottle or if you have any Market Vineyards, go ahead and why don't you go ahead and pop that open right now and let's do a taste along, shall we? Now tonight, as I discuss Market Vineyards Derivative, I just got to let you know, my wife and I discovered these folks for our own, for our own reasons uh, about four or five years ago. Uh, they do a red blend called Derivative that they release primarily to Costco and at their own uh, tasting rooms. And they view themselves as a very high-end boutique winery here in the state of Washington. Um, I like their marketing. They're so high-end and boutique that they name all, almost all of their wines, and I've got their list here, based on banking or stock brokerage uh, terminology. This is derivative. They have a liquidity white blend, benchmark Merlot, arbitrage Cabernet Sauvignon, uh, basis points Bordeaux style blend, and a dividend Syrah. So these guys, they not only view themselves as a high-end boutique, but they also go ahead and let you know that they really do think that their wines. Now the question is, is whether their wines really are considered high-end. Now, I will say this, my wife and I do have a 2015, one or two bottles left in our cellar of this derivative that we found a couple years ago. I found it extremely enjoyable. The blend, I do believe, changes year to year uh, to this year's blend. And the nice thing about Market Vineyards is they're very honest and open about what they uh, put into it. This is 87% Cabernet Sauvignon, 10% Rolo, 3% Cab Franc, uh, barreled in 100% Neutral Oak. And according to their website, they use a mix of both French and American oak. So let's go ahead and dive right into the nose on this. Right off the bat, I'm going to tell you right now, this is a very intense, intense nose. You don't even have to be close to this. I mean, I'm smelling it right here. Yeah. Let's go ahead and take a look at the color. The color on this is going to be a medium purple. Very dense. Almost no light at all coming through this. On the nose, by the way, this, uh, the, this bottle sits at 14.9% alcohol by volume. I normally don't register alcohol in wine because I also have an extensive whiskey collection and spirits collection. And wine alcohol is something that I just don't normally notice. I am noticing it on this particular wine. Now on the nose, this is a dark fruit wine. I'm talking black plum black cherry, I'm getting a, a prune juice note. There's a little bit of green bell pepper. Now, normally green bell pepper is not something I would get with Cabernet Sauvignon. It is a tasting note of theirs. But I'm wondering if adding that little bit of Cab Franc, and Cab Franc and Carmier are really where I pick up that green bell pepper note. I'm wondering if that 3% is really open that up on the nose. There's a little bit of a leather note. And then on the, the, the only tertiary I'm really getting, and it's really very light, is a nutmeg spice note. Yeah. The nose on this is aggressive as well. Let's go ahead and have a sip. Okay, this is a full-bodied wine. When I sip on it, it literally is a black flute fruit explosion in my mouth. That plum, that black cherry, that prune is right there. And I mean, it is just, and it, but it's not sweet. There is a very well balanced mix of 
tannins. The tannins tend to be a little bit more grainy, a little bit aggressive, but there's a bite of acidity that goes a lot, right along with it. I mean, like two parallel cars going down the highway. There's the alcohol note that I'm getting towards the mid palate and the very back of it. It's not off-putting, but it can be if it's not something that you're used to. The finish on this, I'm going to say is a little bit, this, I think the finish is where it is at its weakest. Um, it's about a medium to medium plus on the finish, not a full finish. There's a savory note that's coming through. Now I will say this, I'm getting that leather, I'm getting that nutmeg, but the green bell pepper note that I would normally get on a Cab Franc or Carmenier, even though I got it on the nose here, I'm not getting it as much on the palate. I mean, I'm getting more of a, maybe a, a peppercorn style of note, um, but it's definitely not green bell pepper. Let's go ahead and have one more sip of this. I like to take the wine and just kind of let it sit on my palate for a little bit. I let it sit there. My teeth immediately dried up on this one, on this last sip. The tannins are really coming forward now. The acidity is taking a step back on the second sip. But it's still a very well balanced. The, the, the tannins have slightly pulled ahead on the road next to the next to the acidity. The finish on this, this is definitely not a sweet wine at all. This is an off dry wine. The only sweetness is the hints of the prune and the black cherry, but it's not it's not that sweet note that you would get. I would say it's probably a little bit of a think of it as an, a slightly underripe cherry or slightly underripe uh, 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 oh, what do I say black cherry note. So anyways, what do I think about this wine? This wine is, if it wasn't so aggressive, this wine would be a top five contender for me for the year. As it sits, this is a well, this is a, this is a wine that's going to age extremely well. Um, I don't think you're going to have any problems, uh, putting this in a wine cellar, buy about three or four bottles and maybe pulling them out once a year, maybe plug, you know, once, uh, every December or something and seeing if that tertiary note has developed a little bit more of that leather note, um, maybe a little bit more, uh, of that cinnamon spice or nutmeg or all baking spice, spice notes. I think that has a really good chance of happening here. <sighs> However, I am going to warn you, if you don't like aggressive wines, this wine is probably not for you. Now, I did pull up their website. I'm not seeing this, but according to the rep that I talked to at Costco, they do have this at their tasting rooms in both Woodenville and in Richland. And obviously, Costco, I paid $17 for this wine. To be honest with you, this tastes like a $24, $25, $26 bottle of wine um, that's relatively, that, that will age. Okay, let me put that put that out there. If I were, if I am in a serious mood to age some wine, this is one of those wines where I'm gonna say, okay, you know what? I'm gonna put it in my cellar. I'm gonna put the tag on it. Say, do not open until 2022, 2023. Okay. Um, anyways, let me know, guys. What you know, bleh, let me know what you guys think down below. Have you had derivative before? Have you had any of the previous iterations? Let me know that as well. Also, if you guys could, um, I'm not going to tell you to like, comment, and share, but if you would like to, please go ahead and when the end screen cop pops up, a recommended viewer uh, of one of my videos should pop up. And please go ahead and take the time to watch that as well. So, folks, as always, like I like to say, life is too short for bad wine. This is a very aggressive wine. This is a pretty good wine. I think most people will enjoy it. And I think it's going to age very well. Cheers. Yeah, this wine could easily kick ass.